Okay, I'd like to call the Enfield Inland Wetlands and Watercourse Agency meeting to order. Can I have roll call, please? Joe Marie Nelson. Here. Jill Kravitz. Here. Roby Staples. Don Donna Corbin Sabinski. Here. Brian Peruta. Here. Joseph Perello Jr. Here. John Ungeyer. Joseph Albert. And Frank Alignment. Okay. Um, Let's stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I will see, um, I will see Joe Prello as a full voting member tonight. Um, Fire evacuation announcement. In case of fire, there are two ways to exit the chambers. To my left, exit through the council chamber doors, turn left, and walk down one flight of stairs and out of the building, or exit the door to the rear of these chambers. In either case, once outside the building, walk a safe distance away from the building. Okay, next item on the agenda, executive session. Nothing? Nothing. Um, public participation, issues of concern that are not on the agenda. Is there anybody wishing to address the commission? Public hearings, we have none scheduled. Correspondence, Jim. Okay, in your packet you'll find the fall 2012 habitat uh, for your reading enjoyment. Also, in your new folders there on your desk, you'll find two pieces of paper. Uh, one is the building permit approvals update um, that's been updated from our last meeting. I, actually, I think, I, yeah, from uh, the last list you got stopped sometime in August. So this is August 30th through November 6th. And again, uh, these approvals are uh, mostly, mainly decks, uh, small additions, and sheds. Next item on the agenda is commissioner correspondence. We'll start down with Donna. Anything? Nothing. Today? Okay. Brian? Nothing for me. Jill? Nothing, thank you. And Joe? Negative. Okay. Um, I just had, a, well, really one item. Just wanted to make sure everybody received Jose's email on January 29th. They're scheduling a land use board meeting with um, town attorney Kevin Deneen. So I hope everybody got that email, and mm -hmm. we'll try to attend. It looks pretty informative. Um, and then my other item I was going to discuss was the slides, ETV slides, for the fall season that's now winter. Just right. wondering I, how we're making on that. <laughs> um, I was told to speak to um, was it, uh, Mr. Du Ducher, or um, sure. yeah. Henry Dutcher. Henry Dutcher, yes, sir. And I have yet to make that contact, so I, I dropped it on that okay. one. Okay. So. All right. Um, the uh, conservation, just to add to that, the const I'm also the li liaison with the Conservation Commission, and they're also interested in doing the same uh, with the uh, escarpments and, and wetlands and just getting some more information out to the public in a more regular uh, time frame. So. Right. A couple slides here and there I think yeah. would be great. Okay. okay. Thank you. Um, approval of minutes, October 16, 2012, <coughs> regular meeting. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the meetings of uh, Tuesday, October 16th. Motion made by Jill, seconded by Donna. Any discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Abstain? Abstain. Two abstentions, okay. Um, next item on the agenda is wetlands agent report. Okay. <clears throat> uh, the agenda that you have here, of course, was wrong with the day. Uh, today is not Wednesday, it's Tuesday. So I'll let you know it was updated at the town clerk's office, so that, that was taken care of in time. Um, happy to report that I completed my segment three training. Uh, so I'm soon to be an official wetlands uh, enforcement agent. Uh, Perfect. Certificate pending, I guess, in January. They're coming out in January. And, and also Donna was there. She completed hers. So congratulations to you. Congratulations. Yes. Perfect. Okay. Um, there's been numerous complaints about um, activity at 318 North Maple Street uh, regarding filling in of a wetland. Uh, I was able to go out there to the neighboring property and look around 
and I found no evidence of any kind of filling there. Um, the homeowner, land, the landowner at 318 North Maple did some clearing of understory. Uh, no major trees, just brush. Um, and it is within 75 feet of, of the wetland, uh, but just very, very minor, clear, you know, just clearing brush. So I didn't see any reason to pursue any kind of violation there. Uh, so as far as I'm concerned, um, I'm going to take that off my list of things to watch. Didn't, uh, can I ask about that real quick? Yep. Because um, I was there, somebody's building a house over there, I was checking it out, it's actually yes. pretty cool, but I, it looked like a bulldozer had gone down through there, so that's the clearing I, of the... I didn't see that. I, I didn't see a bulldozer. I truly didn't. I took pictures, and I, I can show you the okay. pictures that I took. But I, no, I, I, I believe if I drive by again, I'll take a look, and if not, I'll give you a call. Now, there is an existing kind of like a, a ditch that seems like it's been there for many, many years. Oh, I see. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. That's all good, you know. You were there I, at your eyes. I, I walked mine. around, and I, you know, I, I took a lot of pictures, and I could not find out anything looked like other than the guy cleared some brush. All right, cool. Okay. If I'm driving up to the bottle shop, I'll take a look and I'll give you a buzz if it's yeah, something different. I, I, Not that I ever drive up to the bottle shop because we can buy it here in Connecticut okay. on Sundays. Because yeah. I don't do that. Okay, uh, the next is 3032 Bacon Road. Um, that was a uh, the landowner there was starting to put a driveway in. Um, he had plans to do much more than that. Uh, I was able to stop him and, and tell him that he couldn't do any more until he got approvals from wetlands as well as planning. And he's coming in for an ART meeting tomorrow. Um, and I, he did submit some, some plans. Um, the property is all wetlands. Uh, there is a small sliver of land uh, between the wetlands. And, you know, the, the two sections of wetlands are so close together that the 75 foot offsets don't, you know, they cross each other. So there's no, there is no area outside of, uh, of our jurisdiction so this is not the same house on bacon road we were talking about previously is it that was already an existing house that was just clearing in the back yes yeah this is this is a new this construction is yeah this this gentleman's um vision was to put a truck stop in there or some kind of dispatch center and i think on bacon road on bacon road uh, i think he has planning hurdles to okay get over first just so we may never see what what one's application depending on how things go tomorrow um, but I know the plans that he has submitted I don't believe are going to be in line with uh, with planning uh, and if it goes further we'll have a wetlands application for sure to look at I will bring that to you when it when it happens um, also in your your current package there there's four pictures uh, these were taken from Bailey Road looking across the Scantic to a property on Leary Road uh, there was a concern from the um, Scantic River Association liaison that there was a dock in the uh, in the Scantic and if you can see the first two pictures yes there was a dock there and uh, I spoke with the landowner and I asked him to remove it and you'll see the two pictures below he he has since removed the dock so I'll take that off my list of concerns and that's it um. Next item on the agenda is bond release. We have nothing tonight. Um, nope. Old business, nothing new. Um, however, before I go on, at the last meeting we, we had um, discussed putting on the agenda the information from the um, Her Heritage Farms people that had come in and asked for an ongoing permit thing. We were going to add that somewhere within the agenda. So I thought that would be on the agenda. I don't see it. So maybe we just want to make sure that's somewhere on the next agenda. Under and I don't old know where business. you put that. Old business, I guess. I, it's, right? it's not an application. Right. Um, it's something for discussion. We, you know, we either that or um, other, other business other seems business. to be our pending items that keep going on forever. So <laughs> okay, um, maybe under other business, it probably okay. would fall under there. We'll do. Okay. Okay, so um, next item on the agenda is new business. Um, Inland Wetlands number 551 Carriage House regarding the slope protection of existing drainage swale proposed activity within a watercourse and regulated area. Map 52, lot 420, submitted 101612, received 101612, PPE is 103112, 
and MAD is 12 2012. And for the audience listening, PPE is petitioning period ends, and MAD stands for mandatory action date. Um, would you like to come forward? Sure. Good evening. Good evening. I'm Tim Wenzel with Connecticut Property Engineering. With me here is the Association President, Tom Ward. Tom um, Ward. We've been before you before. Uh, we discussed um, some activities that happened in the small stream that goes through their property. At that point, the commission asked us to prepare more detailed plans. Excuse me, Tim. I'm going to interrupt you. Can you use the microphone, please? Sure. Uh, is it on or not on? Is it on? It's on. Okay. Okay. Or you can use the hand mic if, if you either stay close to that one or use I can, I can stay here, sure. I, I'm going to be brief. <laughs> um, I'll start again. Good evening, commission chairman. I'm here with Tom Ward, who is the president of the association. Uh, we were here before you before to discuss some activities that mistakenly happened in a small stream that's on the carriage house property. Um, at that point, we were asked to prepare some more detailed plans with regard to the remediation activity that the association is planning. Um, certainly at this point, we're getting close to the end of any reasonable construction season, so these activities would be planned for the spring. Um, basically, to give you in a nutshell what's really happening here is simply that there was um, this small stream that progresses across the property um, had become overgrown and had some trees that were grown into it and their landscaper got a little bit overzealous and took down a tree that was approximately in this location and was really trying to clean out the stream but he obviously excuse me went far more than that um, so basically it ended up with kind of a mess both in this area and in the shaded area here as well um, the area has since revegetated, so it's very stable at this point. This, the, the old grasses have regrown and so on. Basically, the proposal is really simply to take the area that more than anything else was simply unevenly graded and to put a nice smooth slope starting with the culvert that crosses um, their internal street up to approximately the edge of the woods where the disturbance happened before be graded so it's a nice smooth con um, contour with a rock base and uh, we've shown the grades on the side of it such that they'll now be able to basically mow the lawn right up to the edge of it so they'll be able to continually maintain it so this won't happen again. Um, on the other side of the stream, it's a little bit different what will happen. Similar grades will be recreated but um, it's a much smaller area it's downstream and just so you know this stream at times of the year you know has a reasonable flow at times of the year it almost stops um, so certainly that would be the season in which the work would want to be done the idea being that sill fencing will be put in at the bottom edge of this certainly you folks know better than anybody it's difficult in a stream if you know if you get all of a sudden a heavy rain so it's really important that this activity be done quite quickly and in the right season because they need to get in there get it finished get everything germinated and growing and stable and so that's really the plan and that's why we, we'll talk about schedule a little bit that that will happen in this area as well this area will involve a little bit more putting stuff back this area is really more involved with smoothing if you will um, there, there was not a lot of material taken out of here really it was just piled on the side that kind of stuff so basically when they get all done this area on both sides is now a lawn so basically the oops, excuse me I hope that didn't hurt your ears <laughs> we'll smooth it so they'll be able to mow right up to the edge and string trim it and, and keep this clean in the future. This area drops down a little bit more. Um, there is a lawn on both sides, so a similar activity will occur here, but maybe not quite as close to the, to the stream. As you know, there's a very large basin out in this area as well that they didn't do anything in, so that's not part of this uh, application. Glad to try to answer any and all questions. Um, I, 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 this is honestly, I, I couldn't read your plans. I, I, they were so minute. I could, this is so oh, I'm everything sorry. you're We've saying to me. We've got more large copies. Would you like me to pass around a few large copies? I wish ones? I would have. Uh, well, frankly, I wish we would have had them in our packets because I, I'm not even prepared to really fire questions at you because I couldn't read the plans. Um, but yes, how many do you have? 
just one copy? Two here if somebody likes them. We, we need full we size ours. plans. We got, I mean, there's just no way I could have read this. So. Here, we'll share one. Here. We'll share. So before we have our questions, Jim, I'm going to defer to you if you have any comments, questions, and then. Yes. Okay. Um, I'm sorry, I wasn't aware that the, the small plans were unreadable. I... Excuse me? Okay. But I'm sorry, I didn't know that the small plans were unreadable. I could not read these. They're okay. Um, but the plan is, you know, it's a simple plan. Um, it covers uh, most of the things that I um, talked about at the last meeting. Um, it did establish some grades uh, for the bottom as well as a, a, to some typical sections. Uh, the, the two comments, or actually the three comments that I'd like to add uh, at this time based on this plan is, one, I think the two-inch stone size may be a little small for the bottom of the stream. Um, I like the idea of the, the stone on the bottom because it gives you uh, something to clean out to in the future. It gives you something to, to know when to stop. Um, two-inch stone may be a little too small to, to stop you. <laughs> you know, just a little bigger stone might uh, just we, be a... We can certainly go larger. Because the water has almost no velocity at that point, that's why we right. specified a relatively and, small stone. And I'm not talking about mod you know, uh, modified riprap, just something larger, maybe some four to six inch stone. Or, or that would be fine. Just sure. a mix, you know, yeah. six minus or something. Sure. What, what size was that, Jim? Please? Like a six inch minus, you could, you could do a... Uh, is mod what is modified? Is that up to eight inch? That's modified what? can get up to 11, I believe. Yeah, up to 11. So you don't want to go that far. Just... Uh, I think they have a name for it. They have it. Um, sure, we can specify jing that. Jingle stone, or there's different yep. people call it different things, but it's a size between rip wrap and and two inch stone. Yeah. Um, there's actually a product that's four to six. Four to six. Okay. Would probably be just about right. Okay, yep. perfect. Um, your one of the concerns is when when I was out there and and, and stopped your excavator from working, he was taking the material that he was taking from the bottom and putting it on the sides of the channel. Um, and I see in your section you do have some cuts here and that you have a note that any fill will be taken off site and or taken You said you'll have it uh, removed and Disposed of wherever the town wants it. I guess to paraphrase um, I just want it off site. I want it out of the channel I don't want it in a wetland or in a re regulated area, right? So you could dispose of it yep, Wherever I you like exactly as long as it's not in, in the channel or mm -hmm. regulated area um, so uh, with that, um, you talk about planting grass and being able to mow back up to the very bottom of this. To the edge, to the edge of, to close the, as possible. right, as close as reasonable. Okay. So uh, that the, the idea being, you know, really what happened, this association is 25 years old. Yeah, 87. Yeah. And, you know, some of this stuff has not been touched in 25 years, so trees right. grew. Correct. So the whole idea is they could then maintain that critical area. The other part, uh, you know, today's current environment, anything you can do to prevent vectors and so on. So by making it a little bit smoother slope and so on, we won't have puddles and standing yeah. water as much as well next to people's homes. Yeah. So. Okay. Um, so with that, I, I, I like your, your cross section. You know, it is gentle like that. But I would suggest and, and like to see a 10-foot buffer on each side, a minimum of 10-foot buffer that isn't grass. It's something more of a conservation mix, something that will grow. Um, not at high, you know, not something that will keep trees from growing. What you don't want is trees, right. but um, there's a lot of mixes out there that are available, and we can we can talk about that sure. you know, in more depth. But I, you know, something with a, a ground cover like a crown vetch or a bird's foot tree foil, there's there's plenty of uh, erosion control kind of mixes out there that when water rolls over them, they lay down, and when when the water stops, they stand back up. And they keep larger brush and trees from growing. You, know, you won't have trees growing in there. But would still be mowable or maintainable, you mean? They're, they're only mowed once a year. Okay. Most of them. And they're slow growing, so you would mix a nice rye in there so you'd have a quick cover mm -hmm. you know, to prevent now, erosion. Now, keep in mind, if we go 10 feet on either side, we're going to be actually getting fairly close to the homes. Um, if you look at the width from house to house, if you will, um, you're going to be encroaching on what's now currently just people's lawns. So perhaps we do that from the edge of their existing lawns to the stream bed, maybe? Well, from the stream bed, 10 feet. I, I, your scale is 40, and you have plenty of room here for a 10-foot strip along the bottom. 
You know, I'm talking about from the bottom. Oh, from, 10 feet from the center, you mean? From, oh, okay. from the bottom of your stone, from your stone up. Sure, that should be fine. Yeah, okay. on both sides. And that will also keep people from getting too close to it and, and wanting to dump things into it and, and do things. No, way. that'll be fine. I kind of thought you meant from the edge of our graded no, area, no. and then all of a sudden we would be getting close yeah, to Yeah, these, these slopes that you recreate here, and you see on your, on your plan, your one to four slopes there. Um, they could be. That would be fine. If you want to make a suggestion, we'll incorporate it in the final plan. Sure. Okay. Well, that's what I have. Um, okay. Any any questions from the commission, Donna? Okay. Start. Or, have any? Okay. Brian. Is this? Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't catch any of the history of this. But is, is this a man-made stream or is this a natural stream, the water course? This is a natural stream that was probably straightened a little bit 25 years ago as it meandered through. It starts with uh, a natural stream and ends up after it leaves their property at a natural stream. But when the complex was built 25 years ago, a uh, detention retention area was built in about a two acre area that's off this plan. And as you reach the top end of this plan going upstream, it simply meanders through the road um, for a short distance. This is a tiny stream. As it goes through the woods, this is a this is a two foot wide stream. Okay. But still, it's a stream and a water course. So uh, I, I got to ask Jim when we're talking about um, filling this with stone. I've got a I've got a water course here, whether it's two well, feet or twenty feet. So tell me, is it is it like very low value? Is it uh, no? Yeah, it's very low value. This 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 stream, as he says, comes through the, their complex. It originates in a subdivision. Uh, it's mostly road runoff. All of our uh, town drainage goes into it. Uh, ditch we have ditches along. Uh, is it Mullen there? Is it that the ditch along Mullen Road that goes kind of parallel to the road? And Correct. And then it cuts through their place, and then down through the woods. Um, the reason why I, I'm okay with the stone is because it will need maintenance. It is flat, it does collect sediment, it'll have leaves, and yeah, any yeah. any bit of sediment in there causes it to slow down even more and back up and causes concerns. Uh, their answer was to go in there and hog it out, and they did it very, uh, 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 you know, roughly, roughly, a good word. That's a good word. And and what happens is now they have highs and lows. So now they have, you know, because it, the original slope was so flat. Now it's it's not continuous. The water doesn't float. It, it has pools uh, that hold water all the time, which are problems for vectors. Yeah. So having the stone at a at a grade that starts at a grade and can, stops at an elevation, in the future if they have to do any kind of cleaning, that's why a larger stone. When they go and they start scraping and they find stone, they'll stop there and not just keep going and keep going. So it, it creates a bottom. So you don't have. A yeah, I, I get that. I'm I'm still hung up on the and I guess I have to think about it a little bit, but I'm still hung up on this is a stream and we're we're filling it and I and I get all the reasons, right? So it sounds yeah. it sounds like, you know, from one side I can see that, but from the other side I'm sitting there going, I got a, a stream I'm filling with stone, which is goes against everything that I think of as inland wetlands. And, and water courses, so right. so I'm, I'm curious about wildlife in the area and things like that. Yeah. I, I understand the, the source is you know some road runoff, but that's what we get all over right. town. This whole area is in grass. This goes through a gra it's grass to both sides, yeah, lawn right to both sides. It. Okay. Um, Keep in mind. All right. Is there going to be? You, oh, I'm you could probably equally well describe this as a is a swale or a ditch. Um, it's an intermittent stream. Swale is a good word. Um, it, it doesn't flow all the time. Uh, and most of the flow, it doesn't appear to be, a, say, a stream, a spring-fed stream. Okay, mm -hmm. this is this is a runoff-created stream. Um, because of the nature of that area, I mean, this whole piece of town is flat as a pancake. Yeah, I know. I live not yeah. too far away, so oh, okay. I drive by and, it almost And their every entire day. property, from nice one property side too. to the other, has a little bit over a foot total pitch across it. So we're talking about a stream bed that's as flat as you could be. Yeah, we, we got about a two and a half inch drop, right? Right. It's, it's the drop is very tiny, and this whole process started just so you understand is they've had problems. I suspect since the complex was built with wet basements. If you go out there, you will see you you you'd be surprised. You'd almost say, how come they did not flood it all the time? You know, the the difference in grade is so yeah. tiny. 
we came before your commission a year and a half ago to put in some drainage behind one building that at one point had two feet of water in the basement because oh of off-site runoff from the development wow. next door. Um, so, you know, this is a this is a tweaking project, if you will, and one of the reasons, as uh, Mr. Dusak had mentioned, the maintainability, it's so flat that, you know, if trees were to be there and fall down in this little stream and so on, all of a sudden they almost instantly flood people's basements during a high water level. So right. it's, a, it's, a, it's a little bit of a tricky situation, one that probably today you wouldn't have approved the complex being there. You know, it, it's that flat. And, that okay. Way. If I can get past that, the, the stream piece, is there, is it going to be, or are you proposing to put a maintenance plan together so it's not 25 years before you do this again? Is this yearly maintenance? So Jim, you were sort of talking that, you know, they'd have to probably do that with leaves and sediment and stuff like that. So just wanted to do you put a, do you put a plan in place so this gets taken care of? Well, at some point, you know, and that's down the road, the association recognizes that, you know, they need to look at their whole site. At this point, we're really here to respond to this direct order um, because we need to get fixed where we made some mistakes um, so certainly the little piece that we're talking about is intended to be roughly maintained you know to keep to keep big vegetation down um, just because it'll benefit everybody I think okay. um, certainly down the road that's something we need to we can talk about yeah you know. all right so, Thanks. so at this point you're not you not ready to put a maintenance they're plan? They're not ready to put a plan together is what they're saying. Okay. I'm um, sorry. Uh, you, you were up next. Yep. Joe, go ahead. Um, Madam Chairman, is there any is there any way possible that, I mean, we don't have to vote on this tonight, right? You don't have to. It's because there's, there's other, I mean, I mean on, on a lot of things that we talk about here, um, we're able to, we have enough information where we can make our own mental image. Correct. But this is, is so complex, little teeny, Brian brings up some some great points. I would personally like to go look at this. Mm -hmm. That's that's completely whatever your motion is. To well, I make a motion that we postpone well, let's, this. And let's finish with our questions first, okay. and then at right. the end, if we have, we can decide. Like to okay. How to, uh, Jill, do you have any questions? My question was that you had mentioned, um, you know, it's already been disturbed. So you went out there already, or the maintenance gentleman went out there already and did some work on it, and now we're falling into winter. Um, and the end, the, the northern, I guess western end, um, is where it then falls into the area that was undisturbed, but is the main, the main um, area where the drainage would go to? Correct. So if we're waiting till winter um, passes in order to begin any maintenance or any reconstruction of this, if it were to be passed, would be when we had the most maybe drainage from the roads, um, from a snowy winter, or, you know, that's when we would think of the wettest season. So how, what is your proposal, if it were to be pr approved, when that maintenance would be done? Okay, let me answer two parts of that. The area right now is very stable. Everything is grown back in. There's no, there's no real concerns of erosion or anything else now. It's, it's heavily vegetated already. Because, you know, he didn't really, he flipped stuff over and, you know, I don't know, our description earlier was he graded it roughly, you know, so it's got high spots and low spots, but all the topsoil is there, so everything regrew very quickly. So it looks like, you know, this kind of tall stuff right now, so everything's very stable. Certainly, it's not going to happen productively until we can grow grass or grow vegetation there in the areas that will be regraded. Um, the other part of it is it also, since this stream does have up and down flows, it needs to be planned so they can do it at low flow. So, you know, it's probably not going to be an April project because of that, for instance. Right? So would all the people, though, that had um, water in their cellars have water in their cellars this spring because of the up and downs? No, because at this point, the, there's no blockage in the stream, okay? I mean, it started, this project kind of started because it was a large tree that grew into the stream and then through leaves, et cetera, and everything. You know, they've had this problem on and off, but nothing is any worse than it was before now. So. Yep. Any more questions, Joe? I have got a question for uh, Mr. Ward. I, I, you are the association president? Okay. Um, 
that's your property, whether it's condominiums or what, that's your property. So we all have ID cards, but do you want us to come and see you before we go out there and, and look around and you could go out there with us or what are your wishes on it? Either way is fine with me. If you want to go out as a team and take a look at it, that's fine. Or if you want me to be with you. No, I just, I, I just yeah. no, wanted to just ask permission. Jim's been out and uh, sure, that's fine. Okay. Thank you, sir. Now, we do have some photographs that I can share with you if that helps you this evening. I mean, we shared them with you a little bit when we met before. So if you would like to review those, if those are useful, I can grab them in my file. So, I'm sorry, gra grab what? Photographs, Photos. if you would like. If that's helpful or if you want to visit, certainly. Um, that's, that's up to you. And if anybody wants to see them, Jim may want to have them for the file. I don't know. It's not that large of an area, so you <coughs> right. drive out and sit in the middle of the road that separates the north and south streams and you can look at this way and look at that way and it's very, okay. very visible it's not you do have some so. photos to pass out this evening you have some photos you said he said okay. get them out of we can show them this evening the show sure i'd be glad i, I would like sure. to see them if i make them oh. did, you, did you have any questions yeah. i do have a <clears throat> couple of questions ahead. um the depth um i guess through joe marie to the a wetlands agent to the jet um the depth of this brook stream uh, it, it it's not a defined channel. It, it's a, a swell, like, like gentlemen are calling mm -hmm. it. It's a swell. It's a depressed area. Probably total depth um, varies probably by the pipe. It's probably three feet deep, four feet deep, uh, to almost flat at the other end where it comes out of the woods. Right. Right. I guess I'm right. going to something that you had commented on that. The high flow of this particular area is our stormwater runoff from the town system. So my question is, has there been any disturbance that would create any issues in the neighborhoods above it or um, create a problem with the runoff storm systems? Or Not that I'm aware of. No. Okay. So the depth is, once this is all cleaned up, the runoff storm drain systems will be working correctly. Right. My biggest concern when I um, came across this operation going on without a permit, uh, one, it didn't have a permit, it was a, you know, uh, <laughs> but the other was that the material was just being taken from the bottom of the, of the swell and packed on the sides. Mm -hmm. And to me, that's a concern because that changes the, the capacity of the swell. Um, sure, you took it out of the bottom, but you put it on the side, you didn't change the... The volume of where water could be stored there right. before it goes into people's basements and goes out of bank. Um, so that's why I asked many times for a cross section and got them this time, so we can go back to some some shape, and that was going to mean taking out this material and getting it out of the channel, so the water, when it does rain again and, and, and you have your flows, um, because it's so flat, it does pond in there and has a place to store and then go down through the pipe and and down the, the system. So. Um, well, thank you. Well, that's where I was going with my questions with the depth yeah. and the concern of the runoff that could affect a uh, town property or a privately owned property. Um, if there's going to be any work done, I didn't know if you had suggested to make it deeper before you put the stone in to handle flows or no, any we of can't. that. Yeah, everything's set by down gradient. Everything it's is so good. flat Every, there. Yep. You, and that's okay. why I was concerned about a little bit of excavation they did do. As soon as you dig a hole here, in order to get that water to the flow, you have to dig from here all the way to to Connecticut Mulch. And that would then. be that would <laughs> no, be my concern beyond. is you know, our uh, our infrastructure, if you would. Yeah. Um, I, here uh, not, it seems like our, a very minor uh, right. to, to, process here and not a big deal. No, it's all localized here. Be, and, right. Again. My concern would be the infrastructure and the town system around. Yeah. That to may expand on this. that a little bit, um, probably once this is done. You know, during low flow times, you're going to have two inches in the bottom of that stream. During very, very high flow, you might have four inches. This goes through a relatively small culvert. And flow is coming from the storm drains, a runoff from and storm from, drains. The, right, from from Mullen Road, not Mullen Road, the, what's still, the perpendicular? Still, still, steel, steel, road, steel, right, from the neighborhood up here. Correct. Right? Yeah, I see and, that. And it's quite you, a bit of... Uh, Quite a bit of uh, roadway there that's getting picked up. Correct. Yeah. Now so that would be my issue. Right. We're not going to have any problems up there. Exactly. And the problem from the association's point of view, they have one singular street that goes through it that's got a culvert going through it. Uh -huh. So the height of that culvert basically sets the height of everything. Okay. 
And if you take the plans call for starting at the culvert at the bottom elevation of the culvert, and if you notice as you go up to where the trees are, they're gaining about two inches is all. So you, you can imagine how flat that really is, and that's why we wanted to have a, a fairly well-graded bottom to it, mm -hmm. simply so you don't have those kind of instructions, obstructions, excuse me. In the other direction, quite similarly, um, you're, they're, we're grading from the outlet of that culvert into the existing um, detention retention basin area. So that's also basically flat. So okay, and yeah. we don't have a larger map here. Does this terminate in Beeman's Brook? Uh, I believe so. Yes, eventually, yes. Uh, okay. Down in, uh, yeah. We always got to make sure we have that in our thought process when we're dealing in this area of town, yeah. and because there's been an extensive amount of work done on that particular brook and in that area, so. And it's about, we, about we four thousand feet to Beeman's Brook. Yep, yeah. four thousand feet, yeah. and so that would be my other concern on this project. But I'm I'm good. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions for Brian? Yeah, I just have one. Just because I'm, I'm sorry, it's the first time I got a chance to look at this, but I noticed if this if this is right, the uh, the grade and the section where the stone's going to be, we're looking at 11 foot wide and a seven and a half foot wide uh, section of stone for something that's two feet or less of uh, stream, as I understand it. Am I reading this right? So I'm looking at the two proposed grade and proposed grade section uh, AA. Scale one to five, one foot to it's five foot. Wider in the downstream part, simply because it flares out, if you will, oh. into the the basin, and um, less wide on the upstream part because we're simply trying to match kind of what it goes out into. So, right. so eleven foot of stone wide for something that's about it's, well, that narrow. Brian, let me answer that for yeah, you. If you I, want, at the last I'm meeting, we here. talked about. Um, Right below where they stopped working here, there is a detention basin that was built at the same time as these condominiums. On the south side? On the north side. North side. And that's where the 11 feet he's talking to, to okay. flare out into that area. That area has not seen maintenance in 25 years. Five years, right. And so that is phase two of this project. We, we asked these, these folks to, to clean up what, uh, what they started and then come back with a, a Part B to talk about how we're going to address the the basin, right. um, you know, and two just acres, touch right? about two it's, acres. It's, a big it's approximately two acres, right? It's two quite acres. large. Okay, um, I just wanted to see if I was reading this right. I, mean, I actually, if we don't have to vote on it tonight, I prefer not to. I'd love to go out and see it, and it may not be a big deal. Right. I, I think when you see it, you say it, it's not a big deal. Excellent. That's what I'm hoping a, to find out. A mistake was made. Actually, and that's why we're yeah. here. But. You know, this is not a major watershed. You know. Yeah, but as we sit here and, on something called Inland Wetlands and Watercourses, I'm like, we're putting stone in the bottom of a river <laughs> or a stream. I mean, that's just, I'm getting. I know. It, it's a stretch to even call it a stream. All right, all right, good. I'd like it, to it meets, see it. It meets the definition of a stream, um, but I think once you do see it, it um, there is the alternatives are very limited. It, this, right. channel is, this was a swell put through the, the condo 25 years ago. All right. Um, it met the standards 25 years ago. Um, 25 years ago, I don't think we pushed having maintenance plans like we'd like to now. I don't think we even do a real good job yeah. putting together maintenance plans and then having anyone adhere to them, uh, which is something that we talked about last meeting with um, okay. Heritage. So this is this is a very typical example of what happens after 25 years yeah. of no maintenance. Um, when you when you do want to do something, you can't just send a guy out with a machine. Not, not that they're not skilled, but it, that isn't the first step. It, right, right, right. There needs to be some forethought, some planning, and I think since this conversation started, with you know, after we uh, gave them a letter of violation, they saw the original drawings and realized, you know, then realized there's a base and there's there's a whole system here that needs to be looked at. Um, but what we want to do is the first step is clean up what was disturbed, and then move okay. on to the second part. All right, and it's a nice place, and those nice places with water in the basement just breaks my heart. But all right, I'd like to get out and take a look at it, if you don't mind. So if you see me, I'm not going to Yeah. Go right ahead, sure. So. Um, the letter from uh, uh, August 14th from Jose, it's a, basically was a cease and desist order. Correct. Mm -hmm. wouldn't, wouldn't you follow up with a corrective action letter, uh, the violation, and the corrective action the town would expect to be done, that we would follow, that we would make sure 
was done correctly and um, this would be resolved. Well, what, what follows the cease and desist, I guess I'm asking. And okay, and I misspoke. It wasn't a violation. I, I sent them a cease and desist uh, on Jose signed it, but you know, I, I was the one that mm -hmm. saw the, viol the, uh, the work going on. And what we asked them to do is stop what they're doing okay. and come in here for a permit and mm -hmm. prov prov provide us a plan of what they're going to do and how they're going to do it. And that's what you see, you know, what we finally have in front of us, an application mm -hmm. for a permit to do um, grading and maintenance in that channel okay, to, so to a certain what, line. What they and, have presented with us, in your opinion, does it rectify the problem that caused the cease and desist order, what they're proposing to us tonight? Yes. It, it's, it would fix in all issues. Right. It, well, it's not going to fix their, their wet basements. No, no, um, our issues it, that the town is concerned right, with. From what I saw going out there, yes, not having a permit, we'd be able to get them a permit mm -hmm. based on a plan that has grades on it, that has a cross-section, that has a, uh, a seating plan that has vegetation spelled out that we want, um, has a buffer, it has stone that isn't going to uh, move easily. And in your professional opinion, if they carry out what you've recommend, recommended to them, it'll fix everything. The problem yes. we had. Yes, yes, I think it's a great, a great improvement. I don't need to see it as long as they follow your. Jim will be. A, if they follow your directive and directions, I, I'm. Yeah, Jim will be advised all the way through if you read the notes he's involved. So. <laughs> Thank you. Jim. Any other questions? Okay, I have a few, Jim, and I'm going to direct this towards you before I speak with applicants. Yeah. Um, those a couple of items that you mentioned you wanted to see changed: the larger stone, um, no storage on site. You want that stuff not on the banks. Correct. Um, maintaining the 10-foot buffer. Um, and I personally would like to see some kind of maintenance plan in place as well, even though it's a small thing. Mm -hmm. I, I think it should be on every plan that, that come in front of us. Um, so do you want these plans changed to reflect all of that? Or will that just be in our permit? I'm, uh, I'm okay with Where adding those with items the to, a per to the permit, um, which we could have written up. And um, you guys can look at them before you vote on them, if that's Right. Your but we would also need what a separate maintenance plan. So those are those are things in my mind that I'd like to see. Um, it's up to the commission to decide whether or not you want to um, table this until our next meeting. If you have questions or want to see it, completely up to them. You. Yeah. I'm good with staff's comments. Somebody can make a motion. However, you want. I'd like to make a motion that we table this until the next meeting. We get a chance to look at both the permit and go out and do an on-site visit if we choose. Okay. Okay. So, Brian, yeah. Brian, motion made by Brian, seconded by Joe. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Four? Five. Okay, five. Okay. Um, so you will probably see some of us walking around. <laughs> <laughs> we have badges. <laughs> but um, I think Just don't shoot us. Yeah, we all have eyes and can take a look at it. Now that we can read the plans, I think we'll be in a better position next time. Yeah. And our meeting... Um, is when two weeks from today two whenever that today. is our next meeting so December 18th. the 18th yes Christmas. yep mm -hmm. excellent thank, thank you. you should we attend that meeting or is it just a meeting to vote um you may want to attend in case we have questions then we're, then we're stuck i mean we, we may not but thank you thank you next item on the agenda applications to be received nothing tonight Jim? Nothing oh, new? Sorry. Um, correct. No, no new applications. Okay. Um, other business? Approval of the 2013 schedule. Everybody got a copy of that? Um, were there any questions? Concerns? There is already a conflict uh, for the 8th, January 8th. Um, January 8th? That con the conflicts with the Conservation Commission. I don't, I don't know if that's... They have them on the same night as Same us? night. Um, they're not in the same room, so I that's, didn't know if that was a problem. That, the only thing I noticed when I was doing both of those schedules, because the January 1st is is uh, right. the first Tuesday of the month. Of course, that's a holiday, so we could move it to Wednesday the 2nd. Um, but what we did was move it to the second second Monday, which is the 8th. Which then again falls on the same the conservation Tuesday falls on moved it, sorry the second Tuesday, and conservation is is the second Tuesday. But if that's not a problem with this commission, then I think so. 
So what are you saying? You won't be here for our? No, I'll be here. <laughs> oh, <so laughs> this is my first priority. No, but oh, oh, I, but I if see you want to do something else, it's your liaison else, to conservation as right. well. Right. However, it it sets up a little bit of a wrinkle. Then now you're on the second Tuesday. Do you go to the fourth Tuesday then, and then back to the first Tuesday? Why couldn't we just have it January second? We could if no council's probably meeting that night too. So we would be downstairs if we had it that night, right? Because they're not meeting on New Year's Day. I, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not sure they're not. No. Probably not. I don't know. <laughs> probably not. <laughs> probably not. Probably right. Not. Well, we're, right. Also, we'll have a um, recording problem. We only have one secretary that covers both commissions, so that would be a little complicated. for the eighth. For the eighth. Okay. You got two hands. <laughs> okay, so that well, wouldn't work. Um, I'd say let's it. let's try for the second, and if it's a problem, let just let us know in an email or or at our next meeting, right? Okay. You guys in agreement on that? Yeah. yeah. Fine. So it'll be Wednesday, second. Okay. And then we can keep the first and third week without. So then the, it wouldn't be the twenty-second; it would be the fifteenth, probably, right? right? Correct. Okay. So yeah, you check into that. And then the only other thing, putting them in my calendar, October second is a Wednesday too. Is that? Did we mean to do that? Probably there was a yeah. There's probably a conflict um, or something. Uh, yeah, probably a uh, okay. holiday on the. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, do we vote on this? Is that what is required to do? We could. Um, I could revise it and then we vote on it, or we could approve it as as amended, okay. however you'd like to do it. Yeah. That. You want to just do that and get it out of the way? Somebody want to make a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the uh, proposed meeting schedule for 2013 with the amendments. Motion made by Jill. Second by Donna. All in favor? Okay. Next item on the schedule, agenda, um, Jim, <laughs> official map update discussion. <laughs> okay. Um, did you want to have any discussion more on the Heritage Condo uh, request of last month, last meeting? Um, you, know, you talked about you want to have this on other business. Anything you'd like me to have ready for next meeting? Regarding Heritage Farms? Um, well, I thought the last thing we were going to do was look into state, um, make sure that there was a, a state statute saying that you can't have a open-ended. Yeah, I believe that's true. We can't have, there's no open-ended permits. The, the maximum would be five years. Right. And then, um, I'm almost thinking that we should bring this to a, um, like a special meeting or some kind of workshop to maybe discuss it and just kind of hammer it out. Okay. Um, maybe not right now, but we're not, I'm not expecting a whole lot of activity. Maybe in January, February. Area, okay, February. Uh, I'll put it on the. Let's maybe try to pick a date and okay. for an hour or two get the room downstairs and talk about it. Okay, Just I'll put it on the agenda under uh, other business and then. Okay. We'll discuss it next meeting about our next move. Okay. Okay, if that works. And no official map yet. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. Um, anything else? No. Okay. Next regular meeting is Tuesday, December 18th, 2012, 7 o'clock in the council chambers. Is there a motion to adjourn? Motion Second. made by Frank. Seconded by Joe. All in favor? Okay. We're adjourned. <laughs>